Hello and welcome. Please pause the video and try this problem on your own. Okay, let's start by reading this problem. It says that an astronaut drops a rock off the edge of a cliff, right? So we've got this, this cliff-ish thing here. <laughs> this, is my, this is my cliff. And there is this rock being dropped by an astronaut. Let's say he's standing here. There's this rock that's being dropped by the astronaut off the cliff. And I, you know, maybe it seems silly to doodle these things, right? But I, for me, I'm either doodling these things to understand the problem or thinking about them as I read it. Furthermore, this is on the moon. So I guess, I don't know, the moon surface here, I picture the moon as being entirely gray, um, personally. And here on the moon, right, we have different rules of gravity and stuff, so we don't really know what's gonna happen yet. But we're told, fortunately, that the distance d of t, so that means the distance based on the time, that's what this notation means, it's in meters, that the rock traveled after t seconds can be modeled by the function d of t equals 0 0.8 t squared. What is the average speed between 5 and 10 seconds after the rock was dropped? So it's falling down, we want to know what's the speed, let's say between five seconds, maybe when it's here, and then 10 seconds when it's here. So to understand this problem, first let's plug in five and 10 for t. Let's see what's happening. So d of five, d of t 10, what's going on here and here? So we have 0.8 times 25, right? Because five is t and t is being squared, and then 0.8 times 100. Now 0.8 times 100 is just 80, our decimals over twice. And 0.8 times 25, I prefer to pull the calculator up for this one. So we have 0.8 times 25. Oh, you could do 8 times 25, which is 150, and then divide by 10. Uh, would, excuse me, 8 times 25, which is uh, 200, and then divide by 10 because we're dealing with 0.8, not 8. And that's 20. Right, just another way of thinking about it. Uh, either way, here we know the distance after 5 seconds is 20. What is it? Meters. So this is 20 meters. And here is 80 meters. I put in M for meters. So what does this mean? Well, we wonder what the speed is, right? If you remember, distance equals the rate you're going at, or the speed, times the time you're traveling. And we're not interested in distance. We're not interested in time. We're interested in the rate. So how do we do that? Well, let's, let's see some things that are going on here. What is the rate when, uh, when, D, when we're looking at the distance after five seconds? Well, we just are told that, excuse me, uh, at five seconds, D of five equals 20. So that means that to figure out the, the rate or the speed, we can say 20 equals R times five. And solving for R, we get four meters per second, right? Again, 20 is in meters. 5 is in seconds, so it's 20 meters, right, divided by 5 seconds is 4 meters per second. That's our rate at 5 seconds. Then, well, let's find out our rate at 10 seconds. So D of 10 equals 80 meters. I should put meters here too. Then we know that 80 meters equals the rate times 10 seconds now. We divide by 10 seconds and we get 8 meters per second. And here's where things, I think, get really awesome. So it turns out that the speed of the rock at five seconds is four meters per second, and the speed of the rock at 10 seconds is eight meters per second, and the average speed is not eight plus four divided by two. What? Well, what's going on here? Well, the average speed between five and 10 is really the slope, right? Such a cool idea. So it's the, we have to look at the slope. Why do we have to do that? Well, let's, let's see what's happening here. Uh, slope, as you know, is the difference of your y values, right, over the difference of your x values. And if you think about this problem about what's happening here, x is your input and y is your output. So x here are the two time stamps, right, the inputs. Let's say we do um, 10, excuse me, 10 minus 5. And then the outputs, the y values that we were finding are the distances, right? So it's 80 minus 20. And that's 60, 60 over 5, or 12. And our slope here, if we're taking, if you think about what's happening, distance, right? Distance over time, right? We're taking distance and dividing it by time. That is speed, 
right? The units here, we should write the units in, sorry, 60 meters for five seconds is 12 meters per second. That's our speed right here. That's our R value. How do I know distance divided by time is speed? Well, look at our formula here. If distance equals rate times time, in every case, we reverse this by saying that d over t is r. Right? We solve all of these by taking our distances 20 divided by 5, distance divided by time, distance 80 divided by time, 10. Now, so the answer is 12, but this problem for me was remarkable because I was so confused. I was, I, here's what I was confused about. How could it be possible, this is what I was saying to myself, that the speed at the beginning is 4 meters per second, then the speed is 8 meters per second, but somehow the average speed is higher than either speed. How could that be? And here's what I made to make sense of this. So this purple line, that's our function. Uh, d of t equals 0.8 times t squared. It's a parabola. Right? That's, this is the function, or it's the distance of the rock as it's thrown off the cliff. The 0.520, that's 5 seconds, 20 meters. And the 0.1080 is at 10 seconds, 80 meters. So when we found the speed at the start, right, by taking 20 and divided by 5, we're finding the slope of this line right here, right, 20 over 5. So that's this line, the steepness of the line represents the speed because your slope is your delta y over delta x. It's going to 0, 0, so it's going from uh, 0 up to 20 and 0 over to 5, so it's 20 over 5, right? 20 minus 0 over 5 minus 0 is 4, and that's our slope. Our slope is our speed. It's our distance divided by our time. Here, the slope at the end is this line. Uh, the slope through the end of the interval at, after 10 seconds is this line. So it got steeper, so they're going faster. So how could it be the average slope of this interval is, um, is higher than the speed of the beginning and the end? Well, the speed of the interval is this speed right here, this purple line, right? This line is this, represents the speed over this interval. And this makes sense, right? The purple line is steeper than either of the other lines, so it has a higher speed or higher slope. And that makes sense. You can be going, let's say, 4 meters per second at the beginning. You can be going um, 8 meters per second at the end. But the change in from 520 to 1080, that interval, right, this change right from here to here is a faster change than it was happening at either point because, I guess you could say, look at this, all right, if you're going from 0 to 5, right, this change over the shorter time span, right, you're only going 20 meters in 5 seconds, is pretty slow. Then, even though you're going 80 meters over 10 seconds, it's over a longer time period, period here, so it averages out to a slower speed. When you shorten the time period between these two points, right, and you, you look at what's happening here, the change is 60 meters over a shorter time period. Uh, five seconds. So that's 12 meters per second in that interval, so it's a faster speed. So I hope I've helped illuminate some of this, and I would love to hear other people's explanations. Thanks.